First of all, I would like to say that uh, it, I loved shooting The Wire. It was so important and significant. And I loved the fact that David Simon had, a, had something he was trying to talk about, and that was the death of work in this country. And so he had a whole master plan about what, when the death of work for men happens, as it did in Baltimore, because of the shipping disappearing, who gets affected first? The black community gets affected first. Then who gets affected? Well, the longshoremen get affected. And then it goes into the education and the government and everything. But it was a whole picture of something that was really happening in this country and was so important and so well done. And uh, Baltimore, in my opinion, is, along with New Orleans, one of the two original cities in the country. It is the kitschiest place you've ever been. It has a strange culture, uh, uh, working class, black, multi-dimensional uh, culture. I, I find Baltimore uh, fertile ground. And I was just plunked my little, what, however old I was, little white lady with glasses in this world of black people and ghettos and guns and drugs. And um, once again, it was a little bit like nip tuck in the sense that it was like, well, this is too fantastic for words. And my relationship and communication with all the actors and actually even the extras that came because they pulled the extras off the street. So there was a guy who was in charge of craft service actually who was the guy <laughs> who went and got all, all the people that had to people all those scenes. And um, I uh, really loved shooting him. I got to the editing room in New York, they shot it all in Baltimore. All the guys who were down in New York, uh, down in Baltimore, everybody was down in Baltimore. You go to New York and you cut the episodes. This, I have to preface this by saying my job on LA Law was to fix everything, was to fix all the episodes, make sure the stories were well told, get it into the, the ritual pattern of LA Law. That was my job and I, and I had, absolute control over that. So I, I walk into any show with that in mind, and I've had to learn that not everybody wants your expertise in that. If they know who I am and they know what my background is, generally they're grateful, but I've gotten into real trouble trying to help and trying to fix things, and I did that on the first episode of The Wire. It didn't work. <clears throat> it worked on the page. It didn't work visually. So the storytelling was off, and so none of the emotional beats hit. So the editor, who hadn't had anybody do this before, got excited by the prospect of recutting the thing, and we recut it. I knew I was in dangerous territory, <laughs> but I, was, I loved it so much, I really wanted to lend, well, they had never done this. The show had never done this. They'd never moved scenes around. They had never violated the, uh, the script. Whereas uh, uh, the, the showrunner on uh, SWAT He's a great believer in that. He, he wants the show to work, so he doesn't care. If, if it works better to do this, flip it. But these guys were horrified and, and mad at me for doing this. And so, so they put it all back, and the editor kept saying to them, but guys, it was really better this way. And it was really better that way. And so then they would sort of put it semi back to the way I'd had it. But mostly they were just mad at me. However, the editor told me a year later that what I did, 
even though they would never acknowledge it, was I opened that door for them. And they suddenly realized that they could manipulate their stories by switching stuff around. And it had never occurred to them before. So even though I didn't become their star pupil, um, I feel as though I contributed in some way to the success of that show. At least I hope so.